everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Janelle. Today I'm going to be doing a review of a book and I'm very excited for it. I'm doing it in a different location. I typically do my reviews. Um, honestly, just because I feel like I'm going to be wanting to like flip through the book a little bit at points and find out some things. So anyway, the book is The Adventures of Tom Bombadil by J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, I have been reading one book from the box set quartet from HarperCollins every month, and this is the last one. I've read them all now. It's sad. It's a sad time, but exciting. Um, I am going to be doing a full kind of breakdown of each book, my opinions, and kind of if you like this, start with this one. If you like that, start with that one vibe video. So wait for that to come out. I'm really excited for that one. Uh, this one I saved for last just because I had a bit of a feeling it might be my favorite. It was the most different to my expectations than any of the others, but it is written in, unlike the others, it is written in poetry, in verse instead of prose, so it did not Tolkien have that up his sleeve. So far, I guess so he did. Um, but there are 16 different poems in this book. Now, I didn't read the introduction because quite often with books that have been published, for a while I find the introduction tends to kind of give away things from the story and after I was done reading it I read the first sentence of like the first couple sentences maybe of the introduction and yeah it gave away some stuff about the Lord of the Rings series and I didn't want to know these things but now I do and it's fine but because I skipped the introduction I also accidentally skipped the preface from Tolkien himself where he states that these poems, more or less, were all written by hobbits, which is a great just way of getting out of if people are like, well, oh, poetry's bad, well, it's written by a hobbit, like, you know, I was like, that's brilliant. Um, I personally really liked the poetry. I thought it was very clever the way it moved and flowed, and he did different um, patterns and variations. About halfway through, I started reading the poetry out loud, which I really enjoyed, and honestly, I recommend doing that for the whole thing. Um, the book itself, it isn't that long. The entirety is about 270 pages. The poems themselves go up to, I think, around 107 pages or so. So definitely not the full length of the book. After the poems, it goes into the commentary, which typically I'm not really there for. I just want them in their original, like their, how they are, just as the story. But I like how this commentary, it lists each poem, a little intro, does the poem again, and then does the commentary. I didn't read it for every poem because I had just read every poem, so I didn't really want to read every poem again. Um, but for a few of my favorites, yeah, I did, and it was really interesting. Like, my top favorite, which is, let me see, the Mulips. The Mulips is like my top favorite out of all of these. Um, I just, I really liked it and it was so dramatically different from any of the others. What's really interesting that I found out is that's one that like he doesn't really mention at all and it kind of sounds like there's really no like history or story that they can find behind it. Um, as well, it is one that's not attributed to being written by a hobbit. So I think that's pretty interesting. So. Um, and by me saying Hobbit a handful of times by now, it is set in Middle-earth. <laughs> so there's that. Um, it is set in Middle-earth. Not all the poems are about Tom Bombadil, very few actually. Uh, but in general, I quite liked them all. There wasn't anywhere I was like, oh, I, I don't like that. Like, there wasn't one that was like that. Um, but the Mulips was my favorite. I also really enjoyed uh, the Sea Bell and the Last Ship. Yeah, I really enjoyed both of those two, and was the horde one of them? But definitely, um, oh, and Perry the Winkle was very good too. I quite liked Perry the Winkle. One thing to say, a couple of the poems have some commentary where it's like, that didn't age well. Um, but even thinking back, like I'm like, was it written like that long ago? When you think about how long stories have been around, it wasn't written that long ago. So it's like, it wasn't even, that's not a great thing then either, but probably was fine. Basically, to say without saying, there's a few um, 
stories that kind of go about gaining a lover the way a Greek god would have gone after a mortal. Where it's like, oh, that's written really beautifully, but then afterwards it's like, wait, 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 like, you did what? Like, was there consent? Like, I'm not saying there was any, like, sexual content or anything like that, but it was suddenly like, and she was mine, more or less, and it's like, oh, d d did she want that? Y you know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, you still see it when you read, like, Greek myths and everything like that. Like, we all know how Zeus was and, and others and me. But, yeah, I was a bit surprised to find it, though there there is one of, which one of the books? I think it's Farmer Giles of Ham. Actually, has a fat joke in it which I did not expect at all. It caught me off guard. It really did. Again, when you're reading books that aren't like modern day written in today's society, they're going to be dated to today's, to today's society, societal standards, basically. So that is going to happen. It is unfortunate because, I don't know, I think as readers, we like to think and believe as like our favorite authors, like having these amazing morals and high ideals and everything like that. Which, hopefully for the most part, is true, but humans are flawed, and I think we kind of forget that when they're like a historical figure. They're flawed, they maybe said stuff they shouldn't, they maybe believed stuff that wasn't, yeah, you know? So, it didn't happen often. It did not happen often. I think out of all 16 poems, maybe twice. So, it was it was rare, but I noticed it. Just so, just so you know, just so you're there. Um, the settings really changed with it. It had, it had settings by the water, which I absolutely love. Um, the Mulips, out of all of them, was a kind of creepy one, which I really liked. I was a big fan of. Uh, again, just love that one. Um, but then some of them were just really funny. I do genuinely really recommend reading them aloud. This would be a lot of fun to read with kids. Um, to read to children just because of the way the verse flows. Um, I found myself, and I don't know why, but uh, the last couple, maybe because I, the terminology that was used, I was finding myself with an Irish accent. And like, I live in Northern Ireland, but I'm Canadian, but it wasn't a Northern Irish accent. It was like, a, you know, like a Dublin, like a, <laughs> like a Republic of Ireland accent. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, you know, like, I, I don't know, but it, you know, it helped the poem flow, so why not? I guess um, <laughs> it's probably a horrible one. I won't demo it, uh, but I do highly recommend this one. Out of the four, this one is my favorite. I gave it five stars. Um, so, yeah, just because I gave it five stars, though, and just because it's my favorite does not necessarily mean I think you should start with this one, though. So, again, that's why I'm doing a wrap-up of the full box set, and you can really get my in-between thoughts about each of them. So, anyway, um, I really love this one. There was a lot of character, lots of humor. It, that just seems to be really typical of Tolkien, which I never realized how funny his writing could be, and he could be. Um, but yeah, the poetry definitely surprised me. So definitely no, it is a poem, but it made it flow and it made it go really quickly as well. So it was a really, really nice read. And the edition, like this is a stunning book. It's it's gorgeous. It's, I cannot get over the illustrations, like just how beautiful it is. As well, I know Tom Bombadil deals, is within Middle Earth. So it kind of makes sense that now the next one I read is The Hobbit and I head into Middle Earth. You know, it's a good segue. It really, really is. But I gave it five stars. I loved it. I highly recommend it. And yeah, I really can't say enough good things about it and Tolkien in general so far. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. Um, if you've read this one or any of the others, let me know. We can chat about it and what your thoughts are. Um, I will have this edition linked in the description box below, as well as my reviews for the other three, if you haven't seen those yet. If you want to like, comment, and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that, and I will see you in my next video. Stay safe and take care. Bye.